It's been a total gamble for us as a team, um, but we have total trust in each other and we knew that um, going into the season we were going to do the work in the, in the off season to be prepared to come in and you know, we all feel like we're prepared. I think Adam as a skip is doing extremely well. Um, he's playing well, he's like he's calling the game well, he's shooting well. You know, the other thing that's great about Casey as a skip is he's fearless and I think we're all fearless. Like, I've known Casey since I was seven or eight. We've curled together, so I knew what I was getting into, which is scary to think that I agreed to this, knowing what I was getting into. Uh, but he's, he's like, he's a very interesting guy. He's a perfectionist. He plays the odds, but he's completely fearless. I think everyone has known that and is kind of saying that about him. We're definitely like a, a fearless team. We're not afraid to play a shot and sort of like, yeah, if we make it early, we, we'll probably win the game. We're in position. If we lose it, I don't know. I think in that sense, we're sort of a, a scary team to play, but. He's not afraid to go for broke and try a shot that will get us three, but could lose us the game. He's not, he's not afraid to put his money on the table and go to these big spiels. Obviously, he put a lot of money behind this team and it's, I think, for the most part, paid off so far. I don't know if I'm a high-risk personality, I like gambling, I, I, I just like, sort of who I am, like maybe it's just like, it, it doesn't affect me the way it, it does other people in terms of like seeing, seeing the risk and like, holy, like whoa, we got too much, too much invested. Casey's more like a weird combination between a Cosmo Kramer and a Stephen Hawking's kind of number cruncher, but like way out there kind of character. So he's, uh, he's intriguing in that sense. Knowing that he just played three years with Brad Gushu and probably had one of the busiest schedules in curling that uh, he was probably a good guy to get in touch with because he just went through what basically I want to get into and I want to be playing a lot. Playing with Casey so far for all three of us has definitely improved our game and brought us up to the, the next level. We win and lose with the same game plan and um, we, we know we're going to lose some games. We're a very aggressive team, but that's what we set out to do, and we know that to compete with the big boys out here that we have to be aggressive. And even though we might lose a few games here, say this year, we know down the road that we're going to learn from it, and it's going to make us that much better, and hopefully we can you know, make a real run in the near future. I think when the relegation thing came out, I think that was a big blow to PEI, and a lot of young junior curlers quit curling because they had nothing to aspire to. They had no chance to make it to the big leagues. I know teams and people from the East Coast kind of take it like a slap in the face and I think for us it's just like an extra motivator to show like, you know what, we're from a small province and that's okay. We don't deserve to be treated sort of second tier relegated. Like I think we deserve to be in, in the main field and, and achieve and sort of win that. There's going to be four teams in the, the relegation. There's Nunavut, PEI, Nova Scotia and the Yukon. So four teams play and one team gets one spot in the briar. So it's not your typical briar where PEI and Nova Scotia are in already. One of those four between Nunavut, Yukon, PEI, Nova Scotia are going to get in and get into the main event. Obviously you come to these events and there's not much sort of expectations on you because you come from such a small place with such a small population. Um, but it motivates you to work that much harder. And I think, uh, you know, our schedule has shown that we have put the time in. I think a lot of teams don't really realize how much it takes to get to these slam events, especially when you're a new team and, I mean, yeah, you're ranked like 30th coming into the season. 
some teams have the luxury of playing two or three spiels and knowing they're in the slams. Others know they have to do well in seven spiels to make it in. And that's kind of where we were. No matter where we play, if we want to get the points, we almost always had to fly. Because in the Maritimes, there's no big spiels where we can rack up you know, 20, 30 points. You know, it's all 10 or less. So we're flying to all these spiels for the most part. We can't drive to you know, 95% of our spiels. I think we've drove to two so far this year out of nine or something. At that point, if we don't make the semifinals, we're losing money every spiel we go to. It's tough to find sponsorship back home. Um, we're so lucky for the great sponsors that we do have, but I think compared to the big teams, we're sort of way off. Um, so hopefully we can generate some popularity, get some people interested in the sport again, and maybe we can travel a little bit more as uh, you know, as the years go on next year and the year after and such. Like curling's a, it's not a rich man sport. It's a, it's like, there's not a ton of money in the game yet. So I think you look at most of the top teams out there, they've all been in a, a similar position. I think if you want to get there, I think, you, I think you have to take the risk. And it's like, after I was sort of looking for a team last April, it's like, well, I can either kind of play the Atlantic Tour and hope something really miraculous happens and I win a briar without really putting in the effort to win the briar, like not putting in the work that I need to or I can go and I can take the risk and see if we can build the team up the right way.